We welcome back James Fletcher the third. We're not done with you yet. We got to talk national title game. I, the Cal news is overwhelming everything, but we've got. I, I think this is the big man matchup for the ages. I when is the last time we had this level of big man matchup in a national title game at the college level? I mean, we've seen them in in the NBA, but I I just I, I'm struggling to think back to when when it was this good. Yeah, we can draw plenty of parallels uh, to this matchup, but how about uh, Joakim Noah and Al Horford against Greg Oden? That that that's, that's the probably one that comes it. Yeah. in my mind as yeah dominant big men. Uh, who, who are going head to head here? So uh, the the other parallel, of course, being UConn going for a back to back national title, the first since that Florida team to do it. So uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of storylines, and plenty of them will connect back to to that team that Florida had uh, uh, over a decade now uh, before. Yeah, and you know, I I covered that team as a beat writer, and it, it was it was kind of the same thing in the NCAA tournament. They had one close game in, in two NCAA tournaments, and it was the, the Georgetown game in the, in the Sweet 16 in, uh, in, in the first year. Connecticut hasn't had a close game yet. They have covered every single spread. I regret a lot the pick I made <laughs> on Friday because uh, I picked Alabama to cover and lose, and they did not cover. But it, and, and you could just... It, you can feel it every time when UConn does that. Like, and, and Alabama hung around for a while. But when UConn just decides to turn it on, there's, it feels like there's nothing anybody can do. Yeah, they've got another gear that no other team in America has. They're able to, to hit that on switch uh, in the second half. And that's not to say, sometimes you talk about a, a team that's flipping the on switch in the second half, and you think that, that makes them vulnerable. Because if they get down in the first half, then they're in trouble. This UConn team doesn't get down in the first half, though. Uh, they're they're below uh, on switch flip level is still right there with the best teams in the country. They're, they're still tied uh, or even ahead of the Alabamas, the San Diego States, those teams that they've gone through Illinois, uh, you know, tied with those teams or, or slightly ahead. And then they hit this mode that no one else can hit where, where they're clicking on offense and on defense uh, on the perimeter and the interior on both ends of the floor. And they just become unstoppable for a five, 10 minute stretch. And then the game's over. There's just nothing yeah. you can do uh, once that, that, that tsunami hits uh, from, from both ends of the floor that they get on. So we, we're going to talk Donovan Klingon and, and Zach Eady, and that that's going to be the featured matchup. But before we get to that in the backcourt, Who's the most important player for UConn? We, I, we, I, we can say Braden Smith for, for Purdue for sure, but who do you think needs to have their best game for UConn? For UConn, I think it, it comes down to Tristan Newton. He has been the guy who has stepped up when they have hit this, this extra level that they have. You look back at last year's UConn team, and Tristan Newton was a guy who he played a role through most of the year. He was a good, solid guy that they could count on. But once they got to the NCAA tournament, he was the one who, who hit that, that, that next step in his evolution as a player and really elevated them above all the other teams that they were facing when they went on that dominant run and, and took the national title game in a blowout fashion. He comes back this year. He's been consistently that player from start to finish. So if he can be that guy that they've gotten and gotten consistently, I think this UConn team definitely has the upper hand because the combination of him and then clinging down low and what they have on the wings to complement it, uh, it's it's so dangerous. We've talked about it all season now. Watch every game of the tournament. There's only one left live on your phone, on your laptop, or at home with Prime Video. You add on a subscription to Max, and that gives you TBS, which gives you the national championship game and so much more. Now, what is great about this, because we always complain about so many apps. I got to change this app to this app. I got to I got to remember my password. I got to use the QR code on the TV and log in. Well, once you're logged into Prime, when you've added these subscriptions through Prime, you're in. One password, that's it. Plus, you get all that Prime has to offer, including Ricky Sinicki, which I watched over the weekend. I I'm telling you, they don't give Oscars for comedies. They don't do it. John Cena is brilliant 
in Ricky Siddiqui. Brilliant. Just watch it. I defy you to disagree with me. But before that, watch the national championship game. Subscribe to Prime using the link in the show description here. Yeah, Spencer and Castle, I mean, it's a, it's a dangerous group that they have there out, out on the outside. But let, uh, let's go inside. Let's go inside. Is Donovan Klingon the one person who can play Zach Eady straight up? Or yes. <laughs> is Zach Eady going to foul him out? No, he, he, he can play him. Uh, foul trouble will be a storyline. Can Zach Eady bait those fouls that he's been able to get a lot of people into? And, and how much can Klingon stay on the floor? Those will be the two things to watch uh, because Klingon, he doesn't play huge minutes generally throughout the course of the season. He's between 20 to 30 minutes in most of their games. He's going to have to play, I think, uh, 30 or above to really stick with Edie and be able to shut him down throughout the course of the game. And maybe shut down is a strong term. If Edie gets to 20 points, that's fine. But if he does it on 50% from the floor, that's a win for UConn because uh, that means that Klingon is impacting his ability uh, to just get those easy lay-ins, his ability to, to just shoot those, those, those automatic little hook shots from inside the lane and making an impact on defense. So for UConn, yeah, it, it's going to come down to making Edie inefficient. It reminds me in a lot of ways of uh, how I used to watch NBA teams try to guard Kevin Durant in his prime. It was never about keeping Kevin Durant from scoring 30 points. It was about making him score in inefficient ways. If he mm -hmm. was shooting mid-range fadeaway jumpers and he had to take two or three of them to get one to go down, that meant that you were you were in that game and you had a chance to beat that team. That's what it's going to take. Uh, obviously, a completely different play style, but make him less efficient than he wants to be, and then you give yourself the best opportunity to, to beat him. And that's what's so interesting about this. is Edie's 7-4, but Klingon's 7-2, and Klingon is the more athletic guy. Like, Edie can't just shoot over Klingon. Klingon no. can probably block his shot. Oh, he's blocked just about everybody's shot so far yeah. in this NCAA tournament. Uh, just look at his range and what he's able to do. And, and one of the things that I think that UConn will definitely take a look at is how Ben Middlebrooks was able to use his length to get his hands low on Zach Edie. Anytime he brings that ball down, it looked vulnerable against NC State. So he's going to have to focus on keeping the ball high not dropping it down there uh, where Klingon, who has the he has the wingspan and he's got the defensive awareness to create steals in addition to blocks. That's going to be something else to watch there in the lane between those two as they go at it. So let's talk the coaching matchup. You got Matt Painter and, and Dan Hurley. Hurley's been here before. He's done this. This is the first time for Matt Painter in this situation. Obviously, it was the first time for Matt Painter in the Final Four as well, and he did fine there. But do you think Hurley having the experience edge helps him or is it just because he probably has the better roster? Yeah, I, I don't know that uh, there's an identifiable coaching advantage in this one. Obviously, both of these coaches are among the best in college basketball, and they prove that not by uh, their performance in one game or, or over the course of one season, but with their collective bodies of work. You look at what Purdue has done in the regular season in past Big Ten tournaments uh, and on their way to this point in this season. And, and you can't take anything away from Matt Painter and what he's been able to do. Uh, I, I don't think that he, he you can point to any point in this season and point the finger at Matt Painter and, and wonder what he could have done better there. Uh, same with Hurley over the last few years, uh, of course. So I, I don't see one side just completely outclassing the other from a coaching standpoint. I, I think we're going to get what we always want in sports, which is the guys on the court deciding the game uh, with how they're able to perform on that given night. I heard Dan Hurley last week talking about that Billy Donovan was the, one of the first people he reached out to. Donovan was the guy who coached the, the Florida team that went back-to-back -back, that was the last back-to-back -back national title team. And that was really interesting because I, I have actually, for my old job and for several projects, talked to Billy Donovan at length about how he handled that second national championship season because he felt like he didn't handle it as well as he could have at first and, and kind of midstream changed his tack to let his players have a little more fun to, to try to you know get the weight of expectations off them. And you, you could tell when it happened during that season. And Hurley, I think, has never fallen into that trap. I think he did the research well enough 
to understand how to handle this. Like, I, it, it feels like, and I realize he's always been kind of a, a sarcastic, jokey guy in interviews, but I feel like he's been even more fun, for lack of a better term, this season than he was last season, almost intentionally to keep the pressure off. Yeah, I do. I do see a lot of that that you're talking about uh, with that fun aspect. I think part of that is who he is. Uh, he, he he will have some fun as fiery as he can get on the sideline or in the interview. He, he has some fun with his players, especially uh, throughout the course of the season. And you catch that glimpse uh, when you when you look at this team. I think that the other thing that has, has probably helped him is that Florida team that you talked about the weight of expectation coming in and, and knowing where you had been and that everyone expects you to do it again. When it's all the same guys, you start to get this, uh, this go to work mentality, the, this we're, we're, we're here to, on business. We're not here yeah. uh, to have fun. It, and it, when it's business, you risk kind of that burnout of just, we're coming in every day and it feels like we're working real hard and the payoff is never going to be enough because the second mm. we slip up, people are going to question us versus a UConn who has three of their top six scores from last season being replaced. And sure they've got the experience there. They've got the guys, but there's enough new faces, enough of a new chemistry with this team that they understand that that team is not this team and that they've got to create their own history and be their own team from a personality standpoint. And so Hurley then has, has molded that, in the right way and been able to guide these guys uh, towards the, the mentality that they need to have to make another national title run. So we'll find out what happens. Either it's going to be the first repeat national champion since 2007 or a program that's been really, really good finally breaking through. So either way, very exciting result. And I just can't wait to see those two big guys play. James, thank you so much. We will talk to you on Tuesday morning after a national champ has been crowned. Can't wait. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.